week we read Stone Soup, and this week we're going to read The Stone Garden. There's a little subtitle below The Stone Garden. It says, A Reimagining of Stone Soup. If we look at that word, reimagining, we probably are familiar with imagine, right? That's thinking of something in your brain or how thinking about how it could be. Re, a prefix on the front of a word, often means again. So you're reimagining, you're thinking of it in a new way. Up here it also says that this is a fractured folktale. And a fractured folktale um, is a... It takes a classic folktale and it um, has a twist. It adds a twist to it. So it could change characters or make it more modern. You'll notice right away if you look down at these pictures, um, it does certainly look more like life today. Remember in Stone Soup, we had um, villagers and they dressed very differently than we dressed today. Their homes looked very different. Um, their setting was very different, whereas these people are dressed more like us, their homes look more like ours. So that's what makes it um, a fractured folktale, is that it is um, just a little bit more modern or a little more present day. And then folktale tells us that we're still going to learn a lesson. So as we're reading, we need to be thinking about um, what lesson we may be learning. Now this unit we've been talking about, point of view. So this first reading, as we go through, I want you to think about the point of view of the visitor, um, who is going to be this guy in the, the yellow sweater here, okay? We're going to think of it from his point of view first, and then we're going to come back and look at it from the neighbor's point of view the second time, okay? So the first time, though, I really want you thinking, um, putting yourself in the visitor's shoes. All right, you should be open to page 30 in your close reader, ready to follow along. Extended Read 2. Remember to annotate as you read. The Stone Garden, a reimagining of Stone Soup by Jeffrey First. The houses on Yancey Place were on the small side. They were kind of old, too, but the homes were neat. The yards were tidy. The people of Yancey Place were proud of their neighborhood. That changed when the gas station on the corner closed. The owners took out the gas tanks. They took out the pumps. They knocked down the building where you got snacks. All that was left was an empty lot. Well, it wasn't empty, empty. Stones, bricks, broken slate, plastic bottles, and old tires were everywhere. This is an eyesore, said the people of Yancey Place. A small crowd stood in front of the litter-filled lot. What can be done about it? There is nothing we can do cried a woman with ten-year-old twins. To make it even worse, now I am afraid to let my kids ride their bikes. They might go into the lot and hurt themselves. Voices rose, then grew quiet. An old man in a cloth cap stepped through the crowd. He was a visitor to Yancey Place. He went into the lot. He looked around. This is not an eyesore, he said. It is a lovely stone garden. Then the visitor took off his backpack and rolled up his sleeves. He pushed a large stone to the center of the lot. So hopefully you're seeing some similarities, just like the villagers, the neighbors are kind of all gathered together, um, and a visitor comes up and there's a problem, right? In Stone Soup, the problem was that they were very hungry. In this case, um, the problem is that the lot has been um, abandoned and trashed and it doesn't look very good and it's not very safe for the kids. So we're looking for the visitor's point of view 
um, what he's thinking and feeling. And when we're looking uh, for point of view, we can ask ourselves, what does the character believe? How do they feel? What are they saying? What are they doing? And those will, um, those will all give you clues as to what their point of view is. So his point of view um, is that it's not an eyesore, right? That's from his opinion, and we know that because he says it. And he says, it's a lovely stone garden. And then he pushes, we can see um, what his point of view is also by his action. And the action that we see is that he pushes a large stone to the center of the lot. So there's our first few um, glimpses of his point of view. A man who had lived his whole life on Yancey Place laughed. You call that junkyard a stone garden? Others in the crowd laughed with him. The visitor showed no sign of being insulted. He said, I have traveled the world, sir. I have been to big cities. I have visited grand stone gardens. Let me put some rocks around the big stone. Then you will see the makings of a fine stone garden. The visitor looked carefully at the rubble. He picked up nine rocks. Each rock was the size of a fist. He placed each rock in a circle around the stone. Hmm, said a woman petting a little dog. The dog had a bow in its hair. I do see the makings of a stone garden. Now the visitor smiled. Of course, he said. To make this stone garden world class, we might paint the rocks different colors. I saw that in a stone garden in Paris. I have some red paint, said the woman with the dog. I have some blue paint, volunteered another person. Within an hour, the little rocks around the big stone glowed. They were painted with every color of the rainbow. Yes, indeed, said the visitor. This is becoming a fine stone garden. Of course, to make a stone garden a garden, it should have plants. It should have flowers. Okay, so again, we're going to be looking for what does the visitor believe? How does he feel? What are his actions, right? We're looking for evidence of his point of view. Um, he says here that the man is kind of laughing at him. That, that's not a stone garden, right? He says, let me put some rocks around the big stone, and then you will see the makings of a fine stone garden. So that's his point of view, is that if they put some rocks around it, it's going to be a good-looking garden. And then he does that, right? He places each rock in a circle around the stone. Let's keep looking for the visitor. Um, he smiles, and then he says... We might want to paint the rocks different colors. Again, that's his point of view. That's his perspective. That's what he thinks. He thinks that it would look good with different colors. And then the neighbors go and get some paint. And then he suggests that the stone garden should have plants and flowers. Again, are you seeing how this is similar to stone soup? where he's little by little convincing the people that they can use their things, such as their paints, right, to make the situation better, just like in stone soup when he had them getting their own food to contribute to the stone soup so that they were working together. All right, let's continue on. A girl made her way through the crowd. She said, I am growing tomatoes in flower pots at home. I can bring in some seedlings. Excellent, said the visitor. My cousin works in a flower shop, said another person. 
He can get us a good deal on plants. My favorite is the butterfly bush. Wonderful, said the visitor. I don't mind getting my hands dirty, said a young man. I'll help dig up the ground. It's good exercise. Plus, freshly dug earth feels happy in your hands. Sign us up, said some teenagers. They wore yellow sneakers and black socks. Other teenagers said, Sign us up too. They wore purple sneakers and orange socks. The teens in yellow sneakers and black socks picked up the plastic bottles. The teens in purple sneakers and orange socks rolled away the tires. Together, they built a slate walkway around the stone garden. The people of Yancey Place worked all day in the garden. They worked the next day, too. The visitor gave direction here and encouragement there. This is turning out to be one of the finer stone gardens I have ever seen, he said. But... Okay, so the visitor isn't quite as involved on this page because now the neighbors are starting to pitch in, but he does say a few things. He says, excellent, and he says, wonderful about the neighbors starting to contribute, um, which tells us from his point of view that this is good. This is um, a nice thing that's happening. And then he also is still giving directions here and encouragement there, right? So he's still kind of helping to... Um, direct what's happening. And then he says that um, it's turning out to be one of the finer stone gardens he's ever seen. All right, let's keep going because look, left us hanging here. But what do you think is going to happen next? Try to predict in your head what you think might happen next. A small man with smiling eyes interrupted the visitor. He said, To make this a truly fine garden, we should add a string of paper lanterns. I am an electrician. I can do that, if someone has paper lanterns. A tall woman with long hair did have some paper lanterns in her basement. Somewhere, she and the electrician went to look. Paper lanterns will make this a fine stone garden, especially at night, said a large man with hands the size of catcher's mitts. But to make it a truly fine stone garden, it needs an outdoor brick oven. We could have neighborhood cookouts. That is a truly fine, excellent, and wonderful idea, said the tomato plant girl. But how can we build it? We have a huge pile of bricks, said the large man. All I need is some help. Sign us up, said the teenagers. By now, some teens wore yellow sneakers and orange socks. Others wore purple sneakers and black socks. The large man gave the teens instructions. Then he turned to the visitor and said, What do you think of this idea? By that time, the old man had on his backpack. He took one last look at one of the truly finest stone gardens he had ever seen and was on his way. Okay, so... Remember, we ended with the word but, which was the visitor saying, and a small man actually interrupts the visitor, and he takes the lead, which ends up being the visitor's goal from the beginning, right, is that the neighborhood would start working together, just like in Stone Soup, where the stranger wanted the villagers to work together to help each other out. Um, so most of this then is, um, are the neighbors talking about what they're going to do, their point of view. Um, and 
by the time the large man gave the teens instructions, he turns to the visitors and says, what do you think of this idea? But by that time, the old man had on his backpack and he took one last look at one of the truly finest stone gardens he had ever seen and was on his way. So his point of view here at the end of the story is that um, he can leave, right? Because the neighbors have learned. work. I'm running out of space here. I have to write in the clouds together. And that's the lesson that the visitor was um, wanting to teach them. And now his job is done, right? That's his point of view, um, that they don't need his help anymore because now they've learned how to work together. And so now he can go. And that's his, his point of view. So what I'd like for you to do is stay on these two pages here. And I'd like for you to find a different color. So if you've been using a pencil, maybe find a pen or a um, colored pencil. And I want you to underline the point of view of the neighbors in these uh, on these two pages. So remember when you're looking um, at point of view, you're thinking, what does the character believe? How do they feel? What do they say? And what do they do? So I want you to choose another color and you're going to highlight um, or underline what the point of view is of the neighbors. And then you can upload those pictures to schoolwork when you're finished. I should see um, the lesson here and the underlines that we made together as well as your new underlines. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you get your lesson written in there as well.